Uh, my, my name is Keith Dindi, um, husband to this beautiful lady, uh, Esther. Um, I'm a surgeon, a heart surgeon, currently based in uh, Melbourne, Australia. Um, and uh, we are blessed with uh, three children and very excited about uh, today's session. Um, probably Esther can introduce herself as well. So I am Esther Dindi. Uh, this is the Dindi. I am a medical doctor as well, specialized in internal medicine. Um, he's already said that we have three kids that I love to call the Dindilets, and uh, I am passionate about fitness, so I am the CEO and founder of Dr. Fitness, and together we are very passionate about inspiring healthy relationships and uh, thriving marriages, so we co-founded Thriving Couples by the Dindis. Uh, so we, we met in college. Uh, we were two... <laughs> young ones <laughs> crazily in love um i remember seeing esther when she was playing basketball and uh she had these long everlasting legs I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah and, and 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 i think just seeing the way she was passionate about life she was always smiling very happy um they thought hmm i need some happiness in my life uh, so um long story short i proposed to her when we were in a second year of uh, medical school um, and I'm very glad that she said yes. I don't know how I would have dealt with it uh, if she turned me down, but uh, she was very kind. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and we enjoyed that experience of, of dating in college. I uh, dated for five years uh, before uh, finally getting married immediately after medical school. Uh, <laughs> it was interesting. I think it, uh, it felt just, just crazy and... Um... I think we've always done life in, in a crazy way. We are not uh, we we are not very ordinary in the way we do things. I think we are the kind of guys who just jump off the cliff and grow the wings on our way down. And um, yeah, many of our colleagues or our classmates back then thought we were crazy thinking of marriage uh, in our second year of medical school, uh, medical training. Um, you know, a few guys thought that it wasn't going going to last but i think we were focused on the love that we had and um uh keith introduced me to his uh, parents two weeks after i said yes to him and i thought that was <laughs> you know this was was serious i mean he took me to meet his his mom and dad his siblings and i think for me i just felt accepted i felt loved because i was welcomed and i think from the very first time I met my mom and and dad in law. Um, they started calling me daughter, and I, I really felt special until date. We've maintained a wonderful relationship. I must say, this uh, we just celebrated our 17th anniversary at the close of uh, 2022. So we are on our 18th uh, year of marriage. So mm -hmm. our marriage is becoming an adult. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, and um, uh, one of the things that really uh, drew me to to you, Keith, was just the maturity, um, being very solid and having that leadership. And uh, it really came to the fore when you dared face my dad, uh, you know, a year down down the line and telling mm. that, you know, you love his daughter and you want to get married to her. And uh, yeah, I, I thought, I was like, wow, this is the kind of man I mm -hmm. want in my life. And, uh, <laughs> I had butterflies in my belly. Yeah, it is sure, yeah so. I had butterflies in yeah. my belly. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I think that's one of the things that we, that we learned from early on. Um, you know, if, if you're really interested in someone, both of us knew that if we were to get into a relationship, it would be towards marriage. Sure. We're not interested in just dating for the sake of it. Um, and so we, we, we knew what we wanted uh, from the get-go. 
Um, and so uh, that's why I, I decided I need to, to face your parents and also let them know in black and white that, you know, I, I love their daughter and this is something serious. Um, and, and I think they saw that. They saw that in us, that this, 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 these are not just young kids playing around. Mm -hmm. We were young in age, but I think the maturity that we had at that time, even looking back, I think we were pretty solid for people uh, at that age and we, we knew what we wanted and, and we were ready to go for it. I think it's just the way we really believe in dating with intention. Um, I was just the kind of girl that wasn't into wasting time. And uh, really, I must say that Keith was the first guy I really dated. You know, of course, there were dads here and there, you know, guys showing interest. <laughs> and I, I just felt that they didn't meet the bill, you know. Um, and this is just because I... I you know, when you're dating with intention, it means that you have your objectives in mind. The end goal is very clear. And for me, I, I, I just didn't have the time to waste. Um, and I must say that there are things I was looking for. Uh, I wanted to feel physically attracted to you and the chemistry was really strong. Uh, I admire your intelligence. So I was really drawn into that and your emotional intelligence, very sensitive, very much aware of you know someone's changing a uh, mood or, or you know experiences and, and 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 spiritually i mean i must say that when it comes to dating with intention for me top on the list was your spirituality you know not just that you're a christian but your character I was able to see that uh, you know as, as 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 we before we even started dating i mean i was observing you around campus or you're interacting with everyone else how you treat people that you know are perceived to be below you, you know, that kind of respect and giving value uh, to people. And I think I must say, you know, many people get, you know, concerned, how, how do you face your girls, your potential father-in-law? And um, you drew him in, he just loved you and how you were able to, that confidence of having the conversation. But please, don't fail to mention that you went to Alliance and <laughs> you didn't shy away yeah. from letting him know. <laughs> yeah, I think, I, think, I think, you know, Dad passed on just, you know, uh, the year into our marriage, the first year he passed on. Um, and I wish he was here just to see uh, what, what we've become. Yeah, but, but I could see that he loved, he could see uh, that I was, I was a young man that was very focused. Um, I knew what I wanted in life and I think he knew that I would be able to take great care of his daughter and I'm really proud that uh, you, you, you're happy with me. Um, yes, but the I last am. thing, the last thing I would mention in this, in, in this portion is just to say I was really broke. Like I really was, I was really broke like we were. Broke is an understatement. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, it's euphemism for we were without any resource. Um, <laughs> But I think what we lacked in terms of financial resource, we had a lot in terms of spiritual resource. And uh, we really connected at that deep level, uh, although we didn't have anything materially, but we knew that these are things that we, you know, we'd grow and uh, over time would acquire stuff. Um, so I think that's just one of the lessons that um, I think a lot of people now are focused on what do you bring to the table in terms of material resource. But the truth is, the thing that will really hurt you down the line is not somebody's lack of material resource, but somebody's lack of empathy, somebody's lack of kindness, uh, somebody's lack of faithfulness. Those are the things that truly hurt people. Money you'll always make. Money will come and go. But there are those critical things, the core things that really keep a relationship going. I think they are always beyond the resource. The resources will always come. I think, you know, a lady can make her own money. The gentleman can make his own money. But if the two of you together have deep values that connect you, then you truly can be able to create wealth that is going to benefit generations to come. And I think that still brings to, to mind the fact that many times uh, in the relationship space, um, we are very keen on looking for something really ready-made mm -hmm. as opposed to someone you can work with and be able to create the kind of life you want. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are very foundational things like someone's faith, like someone's values and, you know, uh, just how they relate with everyone around them. Those are very important and foundational, but the resources can come later. So it's very important to focus on the things that are really core and mm -hmm. then know the things that you can work on as you go along. Mm -hmm. But if you want something that is ready-made, then you, you're probably going to end up in the wrong relationship. So 
I, I think that's something just to, to highlight. I mean, yeah. Keith, as broke as he was, I saw this is a guy who is keen on, <laughs> you know, ensuring that he doesn't mm. snuff out my smile that he keeps talking about. And I think you've really created an environment that makes me thrive, an environment mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm, I'm free to enjoy myself, I'm free to be happy. Um, I feel secure in your love, and, and that really means a lot. Uh, to me, I don't have to keep watching over my shoulder. I don't have to snoop over your phone and, and, and that kind of stuff. I just feel secure in your love. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get the attention that I need. And I think for me, those were very foundational. And I've seen the consistency over time. I think if someone is already struggling at the relationship stage, mm -hmm. it's unlikely that they're going to do well much mm -hmm. later. And so mm -hmm. the foundational <laughs> yeah. things are very It's amazing important. to me that... Um, especially for the ladies, a lot of them get into relationship or what we call situationships, <laughs> uh, hoping that someone would change. Oh. Uh, and, and the truth is, you know, people usually change for the worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you see is what you yeah. get. So, so it's important not to get into marriage with hope. Um, it's, it's important to just look at things uh, face on and say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. Um, uh, a hyena will not change down the line. As they say in Africa, a leopard will never lose its spots. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's important to, if somebody shows you whom they are, believe it the first time round. And I think what you're saying is that you should always be on the lookout for the spots. They're always there. But sometimes what happens is that we blind ourselves to the red flags. You know, mm. you start imagining, oh, this is pink, uh, this is... No, we could actually bleach it to white. If it's a red flag, it's a red flag. If you ignore that, it's going to become a red tent. So um, I think, and we unfortunately, we've had the opportunity of interacting with people whose relationship didn't go right, or they even ended up getting married, and, and, and things just went south. And when they look back, they can realize that there are things they ignored, you know, um, and, and things just tend to get worse. So if you notice things that are off, it's good to address them in, in yep. the time. Um. So early on in our marriage, I think uh, a lot of people look at us now and imagine, you know, you guys have always had a perfect relationship. Um, in fact, I remember somebody recently saying, you guys were just meant for each other. You're perfect for each other. <laughs> uh, How different we yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. But, but the truth is we are, we are really different. Yeah. We are really different. Our personalities are very different. It's like we just set up for conflict uh, from the get-go. You know, uh, <laughs> Esther loves her quiet spaces. Yeah. I am more boisterous. I like crowds. I get energy from uh, interacting with people. Crowds drain me. I'm yeah. an introvert. Yeah, so um, I, 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 I love spending. Uh, that's one of the things. I love that, saving. Yeah, so <laughs> we... Um, and, and, and so... Oh, he's a Luya. I am a Kamba. So we yeah. come from different communities, yeah, yeah. from the west to the east or the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that works well in certain <laughs> areas. <laughs> we yeah. get there. <laughs> yeah, but, but the truth is we, we are very different. And so conflict from the get-go in terms of just the way we, we do life was inevitable. And during the first years of our, of our marriage, we had to learn how to deal with that. Um, I, I want people coming over without even uh, letting you know. <laughs> She's like, uh, I thought we were going to have a quiet evening now. There's this mob in the house. Um, so we had to learn how to handle each other and understand each other. And I think um, a lot of people are looking for a perfect spouse or a perfect person instead of trying they themselves to be a right person. So if you have the right person, you grow yourself um, and develop yourself to be the kind of person that someone uh, look, you're looking for would actually debt. I think that is where the focus should be. Grow yourself to be the right person. And when you come together, know that you will have conflict. It's That's inevitable. Sure. Yeah, it's, 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 sure. it, it's, it, it is going to happen. And in fact, I've realized that uh, a marriage without conflict is a marriage that is dead. They're probably burying things yes. under the carpet. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and you can end up with resentment. If, if you're uncomfortable about anything or any situation in your marriage and you're not talking about it, mm -hmm. you're going to build resentment because you start feeling bad about your spouse and they don't know what the issue is so they cannot rectify it. I mean, then you, you walk around with this moody, uh, you know, personality and it's not healthy for marriage and it's mm -hmm. just going to keep building up and sometimes mm. 
very good marriages just fail because people fail to talk about things. So mm -hmm. uh, we believe in making peace, not just in keeping peace, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because really that fake peace, it's, uh, peace is not just the absence of war. Sometimes you have to go to war, yeah. ruffle some feathers. If something yeah. you, is not something you can really work with, you can tolerate, it's very important that you talk about it. And um, really it's good to realize that you cannot have a healthy marriage mm -hmm. if you're not willing to accommodate. In yeah. the very essence, marriage is two people becoming one. And to merge is really to get blended in a way that you kind of get lost, with, you, you know, without really losing yourself. There's a lot of yielding of ground because if you want to be independent, you're going to remain single. You have to be willing to accommodate the other person so as to mm -hmm. make that one. That means um, that as much as I'm an introvert, if maybe an event is happening and Keith has invited me over, I'll go out of my skin and be able to accommodate that. You sometimes I just want to chill out and you would really want to go. There, there are times you also have to accommodate that. So the thing is that you have to be willing to serve the other person and they have to be willing to serve you. So mm -hmm. it really works best when uh, you, you're ready and yielding to lose that independence for the sake of you being inter dependent and and that with it comes submission and mm -hmm. uh, submission is is both ways but more so men thrive when you submit to their leadership fantastic i think it's something that I, that i wouldn't want to get lost to to thought is just this whole concept of iron sharpens iron mm -hmm. so a lot of people talk about that and think about it that yes iron sharpens iron but they forget that the only way iron sharpens iron is when the two come together and there's friction yeah. um, um and that is the only way iron sharpens iron and so in marriage the only way you can truly grow is when you're real raw vulnerable to each other expose yourselves to each other you know you will be hurt there are times you'll be hurt for sure but that's the only way you can truly have intimacy and I think the fear of being hurt goes away when you know that, um, like for me, I know I can be vulnerable with you and, and, and not be afraid um, and not feel ashamed, really literally and figuratively naked and not ashamed. Just because I know you value that, the way you'll hold me with, with dignity, that you're going to safeguard me, I, f I feel secure enough to be myself. And, and you know, I think for people who are starting out, that might feel a little bit challenging. And how you test uh, how well you're doing in your vulnerability and intimacy, it's by just giving a little bit and seeing how how your partner at that stage, how your fiancé or you know is handling that if they handle it well and with a lot of respect and integrity then you can yield more ground and it's the same thing even in marriage for you to get to that point of letting yourself really uh, be known it's just an issue of how your partner responds to that but you'll not be able to enjoy um marriage and enjoy um even physical intimacy without letting yourself be known because intimacy in the very essence is into me um into me you see you know i allow mm -hmm. you to see me mm -hmm. and um i think that, that's the best place to be just just feeling free to be myself feeling mm -hmm. free uh to express myself and, and 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 not really be condemned you know yeah. yeah so ultimately ultimately i think for for us the goal of marriage is to continually grow in that intimacy mm -hmm. um, so that you you're continually connected feeling each other and growing in that aspect but there's one thing that has really helped us uh, come to this level uh, especially when we talk about our intimacy and how we trust each other how we honor each other and I think it is all about our relationship with God because uh, I feel that my covenant is first to God even before to you and so and I think for me that really draws me in when I know that you love God more than you love me. Yes. As in because at the end of the day I feel protected because uh like like we say God has no grandchildren. So I am his child, you're his child. So if you love him more, then he's going to take care of my needs because you care about what God thinks about what you're doing. And in that mm -hmm. case, I am I yeah. am well taken care and, of. And so, that yeah. and just that perspective, because then when I see you I first see you as God's child, as an image bearer. So there are things I'll not do just because I'm seeing you from that perspective. God's child, image bearer, God's breath is in you. So I honor God 
in you. And so that forms a platform through which then we can relate and grow things. So I think it's really critical, especially to those people who are of the faith, to look at each other from that perspective, that you're honoring God when you honor your spouse. And that has really helped us a lot. Um, and I think even when it, it comes to dealing with uh, issues of heart and trust, the reason we were able to really let go is that there is this platform that we feel is God's hands, that she may drop me, I may drop her, but we both land in God's hands. And we can always grow from there. And so that really gives a very solid foundation from where we're able to, to build uh, everything else. And, and, and still now on that spiritual aspect, I would say again, it's just like um, the two of us, as long as we have God at the center, so I'm facing and dr being drawn to God and you're doing the same, you actually tend to come together. But if one of you is not aligned, then it, you, 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 you could actually drift apart. So just being focused, walking towards God. If I am walking towards God and my husband is walking towards God, then we just tend to converge. Mm -hmm. And that really helps a lot, even in terms of conflict, because many times in relationships, in marriage, conflict resolution is a problem just because of, of pride. But when you're yielded to God, there's just that thing of saying, I think I care more about what God has to think, what God has to say about this issue than what my spouse has to, to say. And that, you know, personally I'd say I humble myself before God, then it's easier for me to humble myself before my husband and, and, and vice versa. So um, mm -hmm. I, I must say that, that for us mm -hmm. that has really been... Yeah. Uh, and, and it's in a practical sense, because you know yeah. there are these things, guys, they say, <laughs> ni God manze, ni, <laughs> ni God manze, people just... Um, uh, but, 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 but it's really breaking it down to a practical sense that if we truly believe marriage is God's idea, then there are ways in which we do it and we honor each other in a practical way uh, that makes the, the marriage beautiful. And, and this is why we started Thriving Couples, um, because we, we had always interacted with many couples. We always love, for some reason, we love the idea of love. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. and, and so anytime we'd see people together, people going towards marriage, would be drawn yeah, in. Excited. Yeah, would be very excited. You know, we'd be talking to them. Some people would be coming to us and asking us a few questions about marriage. Because we, we've always been excited about the idea of love. And, and so we, during the pandemic, we felt... Um, uh, instead of just the sessions that we'd have with people one-on-one, -on -one, why not have an online platform that then can allow many more people uh, to be inspired and to share their, their love stories. And so Thriving Couples was born to be a platform for people who are in relationships, people who are married, people who are generally celebrating love, to feel that there is a safe place where you can share your stories and you will be celebrated. Because in the online space, uh, there was a lot of negativity. Any times yeah, you talked about so marriage, you know, people would always just say, shamed. yeah, mtaachana. There wasn't something positive. And so thriving couples grew out of a desire to inspire people to believe in love and to know that there are many other couples that are having fun, that are enjoying uh, marriage, that you're not the only ones. And for those who are yet to get into a relationship, we felt it would be nice for them to see firsthand models online of people they could look up to and say, hmm, this, this is the kind of marriage uh, that I would like to have. Just That's why we like to call ourselves merchants of hope. Yeah, to, to give people that there's still hope in relationship. You can have an amazing marriage and marriage can be very fulfilling. And in that light, I would just love to add the fact that what we listen to uh, what we we watch, what the people we keep rubbing our shoulders with have a lot of impact in our lives. Mm. Whether we we consciously or unconsciously, subconsciously allow them to have that kind of influence. Mm. And, and, and that's why I just like highlighting to people that if you keep listening to very negative people, if you keep listening to people who have had trauma in relationships, who have failed uh, relationships and without learning from that and being able to transfer the lessons learned onto you, then you're likely to be very negative. And, and, and you know, in the online space, there's a lot of attack on, on marriage, on relationships. And, and the more you keep feeding yourself on the negative vibes, the less 
uh, you believe in marriage and the more cynical you become. And part mm -hmm. of us just getting out there onto the online space and spreading this message of hope was to inspire people because we know so many people who are doing very well in, 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 in marriages, mm -hmm. who are truly thriving, but they may not be loud on social media and, and, and all that. And sometimes when people who know the truth and doing the right thing remain quiet, then the ones doing the wrong things are more loud. You might, when they the, the, you know, and true things are said more frequently, you might start thinking that that is mm. actually the true yeah. story, but that's not the case. Yeah. So we, we just love to encourage people and, and inspire people mm. and to realize that marriage is, is beautiful. Yeah, there's mm. some work to be put in. Um, it takes two to tango, but if you're really willing to work at it, marriage mm. is an amazing place. To be just knowing that I'm just gonna be spending the rest mm -hmm. of my life with these guys, it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, to me, it's just amazing. That yeah. companionship is something I can't trade anything for. It's it's, yeah. it's amazing and it's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So that's th so that's what we do on the online space in terms of uh, marriage, and uh, I think there are two things that keep coming up uh, when we have discussions with couples. Um, and especially when it, in terms of conflict or things that are really causing people to, uh, to maybe get into divorce, uh, separation. I think one of them is finances. Mm -hmm. um, that, that seems to be major. Really, yeah, yeah. like yeah. Um, it's just two years ago when uh, financial issues became the leading issue of divorce. Uh, now, even more than infidelity, uh, you know, a while back it was the cheating, the infidelity, the unfaithfulness, but now money problems um, and money issues are the leading cause uh, of divorce. Um, and so it's something that is important for every couple to address. Um, and even before marriage, like for us, way before we got married, these are things that we we'll talk about because mm -hmm. it's important to understand the expectations that... Yeah the other partner has, you know, ab ab about money. Uh, the, the things that we call the, the money languages. The, there's a way people express themselves using money. And so uh, you need to know how does your partner view money? How does your partner view wealth? Um, how does your partner view giving, uh, serving? Uh, what is their philosophy about money? Uh, a, a lot of us are shaped by the things we've gone through uh, growing up. The people who come into marriage with a, a scarcity mindset just because they grow up really, really without resource and it's shaped the way they interact with the world. And so when they get money, they just want to keep it <laughs> because to them, you know, anytime. They realize it's meant to serve Yes, them. yeah, so it's a scarcity mindset. There are those people who probably have, have, have been mentored and look at money differently or people who've grown with resource and are looking at it differently, uh, people who have different money goals. So I think it's important for every couple to have these discussions. One of the things we keep talking to the young people who are getting into marriage, it's important to wait before you jump into the sack. I know physically you can be very attracted to each other, but there's a way sex distracts you from some key issues in a relationship. True. Sex can very easily uh, camouflage, yes, camouflage some real sticking points. So um, when it comes to those financial discussions, it's important to be honest and have them in great detail even before you get married. Um, but for us, we knew we shared a number of values in terms of the way we looked at money. We both looked at money as something that is meant to serve us. We both have a stewardship mindset. We believe all the money we have, we've just been given by God uh, to use to serve. Um, and, and so it's been a little easier to deal with the issue of resource because we are coming from a common standpoint in the way in which we look at money. Uh, so we, 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 we started dating when we were in uh, campus. Perfect time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, we really think, um, you know, people have different opinions on this matter, but we really think university campus is probably the best time um, for people to, to start dating. Um, we did that 
for all the years. You know, I, I knew her when we were in first year, proposed in second year, and we, we, we dated for five years of medical school and then got married immediately after. Um, and I realized that so long as the two of you are mature and you know what it is you want, and I think maturity is really the key thing here, and we define maturity as the ability to put somebody else's interests before yours. Uh, and, and if you're able to do that, uh, then you can really grow together. I think there are a lot of advantages of growing together in a relationship uh, instead of just waiting to find the, the, the finished product. Uh, so we really grew together from the get-go, from that time when we were broke, students, but you could really see the real person. Uh, they usually say when you press a fruit, yeah. whatever comes out, that is what it's really truly made of. And so the university years, that campus experience is, is a real presser. You know, yeah. the, the exams, oh, uh, the, it was crazy. Uh, the, school was the busy crazy. schedule and everything, all those things, the drama, the pressure from the rest of the students, all those things really help the real stuff to come out of someone. And then, you know, this, this is what they're truly made of. And I think when you then date with intention, as you mentioned earlier, then you can truly be able to have a relationship that can lead to something awesome later on. Yeah, I think for me, I would say if you find the right person who just fits uh, your bill in, in, in campus or in, in the university, that, that's, that's the perfect time. The age is just right. And um, you get to see this person without other additives, right? without mm. spices. And, you know, they don't have a car. They don't, you know, like they, they're just basic. You're actually getting to know that person for who they are, you truly loving them, liking them for them, not because of other uh, other issues. Um, and, and, and like Kiva said, I mean, there's so much pressure through the academics, through the exams, and medical school was just crazy. So it was easy to see someone under pressure, see them um, when they're excited, maybe the results have come out, you've passed your exams, or just how they interact with um, a colleague or, you know, a, a fellow student who, who has displeased them, you know, you can see their language, um, you get to see them, how they interact with the family. So I, th I think it just sets that stage for seeing someone for who they truly are. Much later, it's a bit complicated, but of course, if you're at that stage, it's you're not doomed and it's, it's quite okay. But I, I just believe um, at that stage in life, in college, it's just it's the perfect time. And we were able to build life together, you know, there's a lot that has been our fast as we go, as, as, as we go along. So if it works for you if you don't despise someone just because it's at this stage in life. If there's something else, there's a red flag, that's okay, you can let it go. But just because you're too young and that's, that's not an excuse. Absolutely. So don't let something go. That's <laughs> yeah, don't let something amazing go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and truly, I mean... If you think in history, people used to get married in their late teenage and things that would stay 60 years married. Just yeah. the other day we were meeting some of these older couples that yeah. would be married more than 60 years. Oh, they also met in college. Yeah. Like the yeah. guys have been married for 64 years. Yeah, and, and it was amazing to hear their story. So, yeah. Uh, welcome back. Um, Esther, talk to us about money. Uh, yeah, I think when I see conversations online about money, uh, many times it's actually um, either the men feel like they've been left with all the burden to meet the bills uh, in, in, in the house or um, uh, sometimes the, the women feel that this is their money is their money and the man should take care of everything um, so of course leaves the burden to the man uh, or there's just a lot of holding on to my resources and you know like the women hold on to their resources the men hold on to your, their resources sometimes there are also people who are just uh, irresponsible and not spend uh, you know handling the resources well um, so there's all that, but I think just to go back to what you are alluding to earlier, it's very important that a couple comes together first, like understands their, their, their relationship with money. And that's best discussed way before you get into marriage. And, and that works, worked very well for us. But even if you find yourself in that situation that you've not addressed those issues, uh, for us, we don't believe in, you know, taking a 50-50 in terms of the financial responsibilities 
we believe in bringing our resources together into a common pool and then using that pot to be able to address all the needs that we have as a, as a family and, and beyond if we have any other projects that we'd want to be running or any support we want to be giving uh, out there. And this is just stemming back from the fact that uh, just understanding that the resources we have are given to us by God. He gives us the ability to make wealth and, and, and therefore we are just managers. And so it's just distributing these resources that is given unto us to be able to meet our needs and meet whatever other needs that we felt led to, to, to be able to tackle. And that comes from a point of trust. And from time to time, we see it, we discuss, we have the long-term goals and we have the short-term goals. And then uh, just, you don't want to feel so constrained. So we have what we call vanity kitties that, you know, kids can use this vanity kitty to, to do whatever, you know, that is really vain and just relevant to him. Mm. I can use my vanity kitty to do whatever might not make sense to him, but, you know, and as God has blessed us with more resources, the kitty keeps on on, on, on growing uh, so that is how we handle the, the resources so we yeah. never have to struggle and this is important because at one point he could be earning more I might be earning more or even in a family situation a marriage you it can be that long term one person is earning more than the other but when you're in a marriage you're one so it shouldn't be that one it's your money yeah. married My, yeah. <laughs> so it's very important yeah. I mean we trust our bodies to our spouses and we keep the money to ourselves it just shows some misplaced uh, priorities but it must be uh, I should highlight the fact that sometimes someone might have experienced financial abuse maybe growing up you saw a lot of uh, financial abuse or something didn't go right and that might have influenced the way you look at resources it's good to have that awareness and be have you know have therapy or whatever but it's unfortunate to carry trauma from the past onto your current situation and affect your long-term uh, yep. lifestyle just yep. because of finances yeah and the last thing I'd say in the financial aspect is um, in medicine, there's something we, we say, it's important to treat the disease, not the symptom. Mm -hmm. And so people hardly ever have money problems. When people are having money problems, there's usually a root cause. Sure. And it's important to trace the symptom to its cause mm -hmm. um, and, and address that. If the core issue is trust, that, 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 <laughs> that, that, that needs to be addressed. Now, the other thing that a lot of couples do talk about, and, and we've addressed it many times, is the issue of sex and intimacy in marriage. Um, and I think she being a Kamba girl and me being a, a lawyer boy, uh, we, we have a, an amazing uh, sex life. And oh, we, and it's good and better with time. <laughs> it's actually good and better with time. So that's, and, and a lot of people think that, as you know, 17 years down the line, aren't you guys bored with each other and... and and all that. Would you address a little just about how is it that we've kept the the flame um, in, in our bed burning hot? This is not fair. I should have started from. <laughs> okay. Um, one, I must say that there's seasons mm -hmm. of the sex life in in a marriage. Of course, when you you start out, and 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 for us, uh, let me just begin by saying that. Um, uh, we never experienced sexual intercourse um, until we got married. Um, mm -hmm. And it didn't happen on the wedding night. <laughs> yeah, very it's sadly. A long story. Maybe very sadly. She, yeah, no, no, no. We have to mention she, okay, she disappeared. Yeah, on our wedding night, I'm set, you know, psyched up and everything. Um, <laughs> and she disappears into the bathroom and doesn't come out. And, you know, she says she's, she's scared and it was. It took a lot of, you know, self-control to say, <laughs> just, just come out, I'll just take good care of you. So I just held her and reassured her. Um, and yeah, so nothing happened on that uh, wedding night. I, and so every anniversary, um, it must happen. since then, just yeah, I'm, that I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it, this can't happen again. So every anniversary night for us is, is a big sexual marathon. And but they don't get me wrong, I must say that uh, we were sexually attracted to each other throughout our dating season and it was five years. That was quite a stretch. But then you should know that we wanted to get married uh, in our second year of, uh, like as soon as we just started courting. Our parents said, hold on guys, hold on, break, break, you know. Like, yeah, so we, we 
and, and we respected their wisdom. Um, mm -hmm. And looking back, we have no regrets. So we were sexually attracted to each other, but we were very clear. We talked about it. Uh, we say that we were not going to cross that, that boundary. Yep. And the beauty of waiting was that we really got to know each other. When, when you hold, you know, like you put the sexual tension at bay, there's just a way that then you have to get other ways of getting to know each other. Many times when you rush into, you know, getting under those bed sheets, you, you're screwed. You don't get... Okay, literally sometimes. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you actually don't get to know that person because sexual tension, especially for men, uh, when you hold it, it, it just makes you want to know this person more. But the moment you let it go, you, it, it kind of makes someone lazy. It's like, I've gone the nine yards. What's more to know about this person? So it's actually, can you can dangle the carrot? Anyway, um, that's beside the phone. We have our values and we... We, we knew what we wanted. Before I met Keith, I had my commitment to God about keeping myself sexually pure until I got married. And I was surprised. This is uncommon in, 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 in men. And I think for me, that was one of the things that told me this is the guy. Because uh, people used to ridicule me a bit growing up because I would say these are my values when guys are going dirty whomsoever. I was not interested even when there were guys, even people with money interested in me. I didn't have that interest because I said this is what I'm, I am looking for. And as much as people were telling me that there are no such guys, I was like, if I can keep myself pure, I believe God can keep someone else pure for me. And so... Mm -hmm. As we were talking in the earlier times of our relationship, I, and I discovered mm. that, I was like, wow, this is what... Yeah. So anyway, we kept the sexual tension uh, mm. throughout our relationship. And so we started, and, we started yeah. the, the marriage <laughs> from zero experience, but yes. we, we've really like, yeah. grown over, over time. And I think um, just having that humility and being able to learn from each other, uh, being open to each other, uh, being real with each other, being vulnerable to each other, um, and, but also being committed about yeah. this issue of, of, of sex. Because there are very many marriages where sex is not happening. You know, there are many sexless yeah. marriages we discovered when you started our group. It's very common. Uh, but could you just mention some of the things we've actually done to ensure that, you know, sex is happening in the Dindi's house very frequently? <laughs> we never wanted to be quiet in the bedroom. And so um, I think I would say earlier on, I think, so I was saying that there are seasons. Of course, when the kids come, you really have to be super intentional in ensuring that they don't take all their attention away from the two of you as a couple. And what Keith did to be very helpful, as much as we've had house help, you, you, at night it was our responsibility, we put it upon ourselves to be able to take care of the kids, checking on them at night, was him just being hel helpful, just you know dealing with the kids and if there's some few things to be done around the house and he could you know he could lend a hand in that and so that really helped and i mean we are both professionals and we were working uh, all, all along and so um it got to a point i don't know whether it's when i mean it must have been at some point when the kids were there and and i i just felt that um we were not having sex as frequently as we needed to. And I one day just sat as we prayed. We prayed together before we sleep and we have pillow talk. And I told Keith, I'd want you to hold me accountable. Then two days should not pass without us having genital communion. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and he was and, very excited. You and I've kept sure. her accountable since then. And I think and that's important. Crazy. Yeah, because it's a commitment. Yeah. It's a commitment. Because exactly. a lot of people wait for spontaneous you know you know i think uh, being intentional about this aspect just because of time we will not spend much more on this but just saying being intentional exactly. about maintaining that sexual that's connection right. yeah that kind of frequency is really important it's very important especially for us uh, as women we tend to have what we call response desire and that means that sometimes with your willingness to serve and just have that time with your husband is likely to get you in the mood. So you don't wait to get into the mood for you to have it. You, you have, you, you get 
into having it and then you get into the mood and, and it's a process i think Absolutely. we talk about that in erotic intelligence yeah um and then of course i think during like our master's program when we were doing our master's it was very crazy what we decided to have the date nights and mm -hmm. um you know just ensuring that we connect because the interesting that thing is that your relationship is going to affect your sexual relationship and your mm -hmm. sexual relationship is going to affect the rest of your relationship so really a marriage is not built on sex and sex doesn't build the marriage but they're very it's a very uh, crucial ingredient and so if you're not tackling your relationship as a whole you're going to struggle uh, yeah. in in this sexual exactly. intimacy space. it's about it's about maintaining the connection yeah. so yeah. and especially for the gentlemen it's important to know for the ladies um, it's not an immediate response marinate you, yeah so you marinate each other throughout the day so that you they, 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 they you end up having an amazing time in the evening now we, we've got to move on. Uh, <laughs> we make sex, we yeah, can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> you can talk about it a lot. Um, so just talking about the, the aspect of maintaining a good connection, especially when you're busy um, and busy uh, professionals, um, uh, how have we been able to, uh, to do that? I'll, I'll, uh, and I think I'll start by mentioning um, this period that, you know, uh, we in Australia, I've got a busy uh, schedule at work. Um, we usually have two heart surgeries in a day. They're very exhausting. Uh, Esther, there's something that she's doing as well. And even when we were back uh, in Kenya, we are both professionals. So she, she, she runs um, a busy unit. She's in charge of the clinical aspects uh, in the hospital. So it gets very busy. Uh, but for us, there are a few things that we've done, and we call them habits that keep us connected. Uh, because when desire runs out, habit runs on. Mm -hmm. And so there are things that it's important just to keep them as habits. And we, we always connect in the morning. So mm -hmm. by having breakfast together, just to keep the connection, we always connect somewhere in the day. So I maybe give her a call or send a text or something. But somewhere along the day, yeah. would always do something that connects us again. And then in the evening, whichever time it will be when you get home, we ensure we have a few minutes before we fall asleep where we actually talk to each other and find out how are you doing, how was your day, what are the uh, things going on. And then every quarter we ensure we spend some time away, just the two of us. Um, and that really helps in maintaining the connection. Of course, at the end of every year, we always spend some time again alone, just the two of us, where we again, it's purely for us to connect and to plan and see how things will go over the next year. So there's a lot of intentionality in terms of how we remain connected, although we are two busy professionals. Yeah, and there's just some small detail to add is just um, whenever, you know, just just think about this many times when you see this friend that you've not seen in a while maybe it's in a mall there's a tendency to run towards them maybe give, mm -hmm. maybe give them a hug you're excited and i think for us we've made it a practice like if whoever gets home earlier mm -hmm. and 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 then the other one comes in later mm -hmm. always like taking a pause to acknowledge their entry like mm -hmm. um we value each other so let's say i'm in the kitchen i'm the one who tends to cook more just because i love it um and and keep comes in i i, I will pause i will look at him i'll say hello and just yeah it's it's very important that you don't take your partner for granted like you notice them you appreciate them you mm -hmm. welcome them it's unfortunate that sometimes we treat our bosses we treat our friends better than we do our spouses and and just mm -hmm. the small thing makes makes a difference you know turning towards your mm -hmm. spouse does make a difference when they when they check in it just makes i mean yeah. i feel special i feel yeah. important when i am noticed yeah you know yeah yeah and i think the that intentionality in, in being connected goes a long way, especially when people are very busy um, in terms of prioritizing the issues. Uh, the truth is, you'll always need more money. Um, oh, for sure. <laughs> you can always make, yeah, there's, there's never a point that people reach and say, you know, I've, I've had enough. So if, if, if money is the goal, yeah, and you, you find that you're running around a track, it's like a, a hamster wheel. And so it's important to have the things that are really dear to you, the things that you really value, you then prioritize those. We like to say, if you truly value it, 
you'll always make time for it. For sure. Um, and so, and I've noticed a lot, especially uh, out here in the diaspora, you know, mm -hmm. people can be doing two or three jobs, you know, they're trying to make ends meet, the projects they're running at home. Uh, but, but it's just good to realize that all those are good things, but the thing that truly matter, the things that you truly value the most, love is spelled mm -hmm. T-I-M-E. Time. So if there is no time, there is no love. So whatever you do, prioritize your relationship. That is the only way in which that relationship can, can keep on growing and, 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 and having a lot of impact in the world. And really, like for people in diaspora, I think, you know, for us from Kenya, we've been here for about a year. We'll be going back uh, as soon. I think we have a few privileges back home. Uh, you know, it's, you can have a nanny, you can you know, have, you know, people coming, assisting, doing some things. Uh, Kenyans in diaspora or whoever else could be listening might have their own unique uh, challenges to deal with. Many times everything is DIY, do it yourself. And, and household chores or duties are some of those things that can actually bring a strain if one person, uh, because it's, it could be the wife who is working or the husband who is working, one person is at home more uh, most of the time. And, and if they feel that they are carrying the burden by themselves, it can actually bring a lot of tension. So it's just good to see how you can help each other and ensure that there's no one who is carrying the heavier load. And, and that can, can just go a long way in saying that, hey, I care about you, you care about mm -hmm. me. And it, 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 it brings you together as you, as you work around that. True. And just to mention, um, when it comes to children, because mm -hmm. sometimes when the children come along, a lot of dynamics change in a home. Mm -hmm. um, but it's important to still prioritize your marriage and your relationship uh, even above the children. Because the truth oh, yeah. is, um, children who grow up in a loving home, when they grow up seeing the parents in love and uh, serving each other, then they grow up with the right mindset. Um, and I think in terms of just their mental setup, in the way in which they face the world, when it comes from their home where there is love shown every day, then they're able to face the world with a very different mindset. Um, and we like to say that kids see Mm -hmm. more than they the hear. hear or the other way to put it is children listen with their eyes yeah. so whatever it is we say they learn more from what we do the decibels of what we do are louder than the decibels of what we say and so for us uh, we've known we've realized it's important for the kids to see firsthand if we say we we love god they need to see that in mm -hmm. in what we actually do we say we love each other they need to see that you say we we respect each other how do we talk to each other mm -hmm. i think um by and large the way in which we model life out for the kids uh, is more important than anything else that we, we we are going to say to them and and i've always felt that it's more important what we leave in the kids than what we leave for them um, uh, long term in the way in which they'll be able to, to do life in the future. That's for sure. And I, um, sometimes um, in, in people who might have, you know, maybe challenges uh, in their own relationship as, as mm -hmm. a married couple, they might transfer that onto the kids. Some parents might actually be codependent on the kids, which, mm -hmm. is, which is actually unhealthy. Uh, and so it's, it's very good to be very aware and sensitive about that. And, and if you notice that you have such uh, overtones, then it, it's good that you can, uh, you know, get counseling, get therapy, uh, whatever needs to be done, and just or deal with the issues of the relationship that could be leading to that. Because uh, for us, we believe that, of course, as an individual, there's my relationship with God. Then second to that is my relationship with my husband. If I was even a minister in a church or something, that comes that, like relationship with God, relationship with each other, then ministry. Because sometimes even there are people who are even pastors and they are placing their ministry above their spouses, which is actually not the right hierarchy. And then um, kids come even before your ministry because that's to your family first is very mm -hmm. important. And so for us, even modeling that to the kids is very important. And, and, and like Keith is saying, it's not by telling them, they, it's by doing. They just see us, a little bit of PDA, public display of affection, you know. We, we, we always, you know, laugh when maybe we kiss and they are all looking away, feeling shy. And, mm. and, and we like some, they see that. Uh, we feel that our daughter sees how 
a husband should treat her in the future, our sons see how they should treat their, their, their wives in the future and, 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 and all that. So them seeing a healthy relationship in us is, is, makes them feel comfortable and they're free and they're more expressive and, and that's something that we really mm -hmm. value. Um, mm -hmm. I once heard a gentleman say, you know, when their little girl was growing up, uh, she, she was a bit she bubbly and overwhelming. And uh, one day she was like, he would be talking to the wife and she's interjecting. And, and one day he just sat her, she little, sat her on, the, on the, that high table in the, in the kitchen and told her, hey, listen, you are not my queen. <laughs> your mom is my queen. You are my princess. And one day I'll hold you your hand and walk you down the aisle to your king and you'll be their queen. So it's very important that our kids understand mm -hmm. their level uh, uh, in life. And as he was sharing that, the daughter was actually already married and they have an, an amazing relationship with the dad as well. So it's good that the kids know their, their place, uh, <laughs> not to be confused. <laughs> uh, that's, that's critical things. Now, just because of time, I um, uh, would love to just give a few uh, parting shots and then talk about what it is that, 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 that we do um, and where people can find us. Uh, what are some of the things that you'd then be able to suggest as some important parting shots for you? Oh my God. Okay, of course, I start by saying that um, marriage is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Marriage works um, when the two work together. And uh, particularly if you put God at the center, and this is not just cliche, like literally at individual as an individual and, and um, as, as a unit, when you put God at the center, deep from your heart, he's, he's going to draw you together because God is for us. God is for marriage. God authored this institution. So when you put him at the center, he's truly going to draw you together. And um, the other thing is that do not be afraid of having conflicts. Um, just handle your conflicts with respect. If you have any issue, when you speak to your spouse, don't attack them. Just say, I feel that, that this, this and this happened and it made me feel this way or I, I didn't feel respected and I would hope that we handle this differently. You know, like address the issue, not the person. Be respectful. Don't call each other's names. But the thing is that do not shy away from conflict and becomes less and less the more you know each other. Sometimes you even can anticipate how your your spouse is going to mm -hmm. respond to some things. Yeah, but marriage is beautiful and uh, we look forward to great years together. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Now, for me, I think I would say uh, three important things. The first one is intentionality. Uh, amazing marriages don't just happen. They are made. Yeah, so there has to be work uh, put into it. And you have to be very intentional about your connectivity, about, you know, everything. So it's really, really important uh, to be intentional. Number two, uh, respect. Uh, respect is two-way. Uh, and I think I've always felt that respect is even more important than love in a relationship. Like, you, you truly have to respect each other uh, from the get-go. So anything I'm doing, I always ask myself, um, is this respectful? The way I would be addressing another lady or the way in which I would be dealing with finances, does this show respect uh, to my spouse? And so the, the lens of respect must be put on every day. It's an intentional thing that you do every day. You put on the lens of respect when you're walking um, out of the house. And then lastly, is just to, to have a long-term mindset. Um, a lot of people, anytime there's trouble or conflict or whatnot, you know, people throw their hands in the atmosphere and say, you know, I'm separate ways there's a lot of drama but if you have a long-term mindset we're in this for the long haul um the very first time i remember when you had conflict i told esther we're two people that love each other. each other yeah so and we're in this for that so we'll deal with it but 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 this is it so for me esther is it this this is this is it i'm not this is it so um when you have that mindset of looking at things long term um, and how do you grow together? How do you develop each other? How do you grow as a person and, and how does a unit grow? And, and, and I think, as you said, marriage is awesome um, and you can have a beautiful, thriving marriage in today's world that is possible. Um, we in Thriving Couples are really passionate about that um, and I think what is coming up in the next uh, 
few months, the next few years, we're working on um, an, a coaching program uh, for people with various issues, uh, uh, an erotic intelligence uh, program that we do for people who'd love to really explore the area of intimacy and maximize in terms of how do you maintain pleasure and spice in your relationship for the long term. Um, and so you'll be seeing that a lot. I think people can find us on our Facebook uh, group and page, uh, Thriving Couples by the Dindis. Um, there are many strange uh, fake groups that came after we started our group. But, but the way to know, use our images. Yeah, they use our images. And it's unfortunate. But if you go online and you look for Thriving Couples by the Dindis, it's a group with about um, 700,000 members. That is a group. Uh, join in and then you can always follow what it is we do uh, but in the next uh, few we months page as well by the same yes name. page by the same name and then um we'll be we're working on the website where there's a lot of content especially in the area of marriage coaching uh, that will be coming up so look out for that would like to draw this to a close thank you so much for watching um would love to wish you all an amazing valentine's happy day valentine's. <laughs> uh, have kivumbi on your valentine's have an amazing time Thank you. Hi guys, thank you for watching today's episode. And just to add, if you want to learn more, if you want to read you know, about uh, the Dindis and what they do, they have a book called The Thriving Couple. So we'll be having a giveaway uh, this month of Feb. So by the end of Feb, we'll pick winners. So what you need to do is subscribe to our channel, share this, share their story, and also go to Facebook. Uh, look for Thriving Couples by Dindis and uh, subscribe to that page. And send us uh, either a DM on Instagram or Facebook, wherever you find us, and show us the screenshot of you subscribing to our channel and also subscribing to the Dindis. And you can just write something small about why you think you should get this book. It's an amazing book uh, for those who won't actually be able to, to get the giveaway. We have three books to give away. For those who won't get the book, uh, you can actually order uh, on our you know, social media, just direct message us. And it's only going for 20 bucks. It's an amazing read. This is just a short version of their story. We have the book. Uh, we have very few books left. So if you need to read no more about how to handle, how to make your marriage you know, you just drive, you know, spice up your marriage, learn a few tricks and then spice up and add a few, you know, add a taste to your marriage. So this is the book here. Uh, I can actually post it to you, but you have to, if you want the book, just let me know, uh, direct message us. Uh, you can send us something on the email as well. I'll leave the email down in the description and then it's only going for 20 bucks. But if you want it posted, I'll actually add the posted fee and I'll let you know on the email. So guys, thank you for watching again. Keep Keep shining, keep thriving, all the couples out there, all the marriages out there, keep thriving, catch up on the next one.